you're starting your week with us. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. Let's get started with a look at the day's highlights. With President Park Geun-hye now ousted from office, we take a look at how Korea's economy will be remembered during her time in office. Retirement plans might turn into losing investment as the rates of return tumble while commissions stay the same. These stories are more coming right up. Great news on the trade front as Korea's exports continued to surge. Latest data shows that outbound shipments were up nearly 20% on year in the first 10 days of March. According to Korea Customs Service, the country's exports over the period amounted to 14.3 billion US dollars, largely led by petroleum goods, semiconductors, and automobiles. Exports recorded double digit growth in the first two months of the year after a turnaround began in November. Soaring oil prices and rising demand from emerging markets have helped lift outbound shipments for four months in a row as of last month. Small and medium-sized enterprises are expected to feel the impact of China's unofficial sanctions on Korean goods and services. According to Korea Customs Service, Korean SMEs exported 22.5 billion U.S. dollars worth of goods to China last year, an increase of 1.9 percent from the year before. Korean SMEs that produce clothing and cosmetics were heavily dependent on China, with nearly 82 percent of clothing exports and 70 percent of cosmetics bound for China last year. Now, the same goes for smaller firms that produce agricultural and household products, with more than 60 percent of their exports heading to the Chinese market. Given the high dependency on China, the Small and Medium Business Administration plans to help SMEs expand to other markets in Southeast Asia, the Middle East and Africa. The Korean equity market started the week with a bright picture. As uncertainty surrounding the impeachment of President Park Geun-hye faded away, foreign investors bought massive amounts of shares on the market. We're now joined by our market's contributor, Choi jin Suk to talk about overall stock market performance and upcoming market events. Hello, jin Suk. Thanks for having me. All right, so how did the Korean stock market close on the first day of the week? Both the Cosby and the Cos stock market enjoyed a decent rally on the first session of the week. The Cosby surged by almost 1% to close at 21, uh, 17.59, while the cost that followed with a 0.54% uptick to close at 615. Foreign investors bought shares for six consecutive sessions, lifting both indexes to fly high. The Cosby index once broke the highest record in 2017, and Samsung Electronics, the largest stock by market cap, recorded another all-time high. Share prices of cosmetics companies that have been suffering from China's retaliatory measures against Seoul's that deployment rebounded thanks to improved sentiment. The U.S. stock market overnight rose as well, helped by robust employment numbers, and this gave a boost to the Korean market. So there were a lot of positive factors in today's session. Now, I think we could say the focus of global financial markets is shifting to monetary policies mm -hmm. with the upcoming FOMC meeting this week, right? Right. Uh, the March FOMC meeting by the U.S. Federal Reserve or the Fed will start on Tuesday local time, and the results will come out on Wednesday. Investors in Korea will be able to see the results early Thursday morning. Markets and experts expect the Fed to pull the trigger at this week's meeting. CME Fed Watch, a futures market betting on future rate hikes, now shows an 88% chance of an interest rate hike in March. Although the rate decision results seem rather obvious, investors will need to keep a close eye on Fed Chair Janet Yellen's press conference right after the meeting. She can give hints on more rate hikes coming up this year. And along with economic projections, Fed officials will announce the so-called dot plot, which uh, the Fed uses to signal its outlook for the path of interest rates uh, going forward. The key is whether Fed officials keep their prediction of three rate hikes in 2017. If the officials uh, signal faster than expected future rate hikes, global financial markets might take a hit. 
Now, one of the things that helped to solidify the sentiment about the U.S. Fed mm -hmm. is, pro is about probably due to the U.S. employment numbers, which right. came out last week, and they were, as expected, robust as ever. Right. Uh, on Friday, we saw the U.S. economy uh, created 235,000 new jobs in February in the first four months of the Trump White House. Moreover, the economy has added almost half a million jobs in the first two months of 2017, the best back-to-back -back performance since last summer. Following that key data, uh, there are some major indicators this week as well. First, uh, consumer prices and retail sales will be, will be reported on Wednesday local time, and the price index is one of the factors the Fed is closely monitoring when it comes to future policy decisions. Housing data will come out on the next day, and industrial production from the U.S. will be unveiled on Friday. So we had the ECB meeting last week and the FMC coming up this week, but mm -hmm. we also have two more central bank meetings this week, right? Right. Uh, just to touch upon the ECB meeting, global investors have been expecting the bank to start uh, stepping away from accommodative policies, and this has been pushed the euro up to the highest level in a month. With another rate hike uh, expected from the U.S. Fed, the outlook for other central banks has been shifting as well. The Bank of England, or the BOE, will hold its policy committee on Thursday this week, which will come after the Bank of Japan holds its policy meeting and announces the results on Thursday as well. Most experts expect the BOJ will keep its current stance. However, more and more experts see the central bank possibly raising interest rates or adjusting its asset purchase program. Japan's January core price index rose year over year for the first time in 13 months. So it might be time for investors to brace for changes in global monetary policies. Then what are some other market factors that investors should focus on in the near term? Finance ministers and central banks from the world's 20 largest economies will convene in Germany this week. It will be a good opportunity for Korea to deal with the so-called G2 risks. First, Korea will be looking to have discussions with the U.S. on the benefits of the bilateral free trade agreement amid concerns over trade protectionism spurred by the Trump administration. Moreover, it can also be an opportunity for Korea and China to talk about retaliatory measures by China against Korea's decision to deploy that. Both factors have recently been dominating Korea's equity markets, so the G20 meeting is expected to draw a lot of attention from investors. In terms of domestic po political affairs, economic policies rolled out by presidential uh, candidates can serve a role as market catalysts as well. All right, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Former President Park Geun-hye has vacated the presidential office of Cheongwade as of last night after impeachment was upheld by the Constitutional Court on Friday. So, how will her economic track record be remembered? Our Yuna Skim takes an early look. In her inauguration speech four years ago, newly minted President Park Geun-hye had promised to bring the second miracle of the Han River, a reference to her father's legacy of Korea's rapid economic growth. 4% potential economic growth, 70% of Koreans employed, and a $40,000 per capita income was her 474 vision that she unveiled one year into her term. But with that five-year term now cut short a year by a far-reaching corruption scandal that culminated in her impeachment, her vision looks all but lost. Korea's potential growth rate is said to have fallen to the 2 percent range, with one domestic think tank projecting that figure to dip below 2 percent post-2020. Employment remains in the doldrums, with youth unemployment hitting unprecedented levels. One striking change we saw during the Park administration is the considerable growth of part-time and hourly jobs instead of fixed-term jobs. This can be linked to policy. 
with the quality of new jobs low, stable employment unhinged from industry-wide restructuring, and an uphill recovery battle for exporting companies. Per capita income of $40,000 is further out of reach. Meanwhile, the Park administration's creative economy strategy, touted as a new growth driver, was said to be convoluted and unclear. The future of the 17 creative economy innovation centers built around the country remains to be seen. That will be up to the next administration, which will be determined by an early election to commence within 60 days, most likely in the first weeks of May. That administration will have its work cut out for it, starting with reining in the country's ballooning household debt, which has exceeded $1 trillion and counting amid a low interest rate environment. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. The number of people working in the manufacturing sector has dropped yet again in the month of February compared to the same time last year. And this makes it the third consecutive month of on-year contraction. According to the Ministry of Employment and Labor, roughly 1,700 full-time workers in manufacturing lost their jobs last month, a drop of 1.7 percent. The ministry says this is largely due to the protracted low growth in the face of restructuring efforts, along with the decline in shipbuilding orders. On the other hand, the wholesale and retail industry saw over 64,000 jobs added last month, followed by the food and accommodation sector. Retirement pension plans are designed to ultimately help workers maintain roughly similar standards of living after retirement while offering tax advantages, a reason why many have been willing to invest in them. But reports show that rates of return are not what they used to be. Our Lee Jiang has more. One of the best ways to prepare for retirement may be investing in a retirement savings plan. After Korea made it mandatory for all firms to create a retirement pension plan for their full-time workers from 2005, roughly $127 billion worth of assets have been under management as of 2016. But recently, retirement plans are losing their credibility with subpar rates of return. According to Korea Federation of Banks, the average rate of return fell below 2% last year from what used to be roughly 6% back in 2008. In fact, subscribers only saw about a 1.8% return for defined benefit plans, which account for 64% of all subscriptions, while those who applied for defined contribution plans saw an even lower rate of return of 1.7%. What's fueling more anger among subscribers is that despite low yields, the commission that they have to pay is still unchanged at 0.5 percent. At this, the Financial Supervisory Service has set out to review these funds in operation. Consumers have been complaining about returns and commissions, so we plan to check the overall operational status and see if they're appropriate. Retirement plans are losing luster and consumer prices are on the rise, but annual salaries remain near static. Korea Employment Information Service says the average wage increase for over 10,000 private and public businesses was roughly 3 percent last year, the lowest level since the 2008 financial crisis. Lee Ju-young, Business Daily. Ties between Seoul and Beijing remain strained, and it looks like the effects are taking grip on the Chinese public as well. A group of tourists have refused to go ashore despite their cruise ship arriving at Jeju Island. Our Ian Xin reports. A cruise ship arrived on Sunday afternoon at Korea's southern resort island of Jeju-do, only to find that all 3,400 Chinese passengers refused to get off. The Costa Serena ship had come from Fukuoka, Japan, but the captain was unaware of the situation until the ship came into port. Jeju-do Island has been especially popular with tourists from China in recent years. The island officials say this is the first time in 20 years something like this has happened. After four hours, the ship set sail for its next stop, Tianjin, China. Beijing has strongly opposed the deployment of the U.S. missile defense system THAAD, the first stage of which began last week, claiming the system's radar could be used to spy on the Chinese military. Last month, China ordered local travel agencies to stop selling vacation packages to Korea, a policy which will take effect this Wednesday. 
But already, a number of sectors in the Korean economy, including tourism, have been hit by measures from China seen as retaliation for Seoul's decision to deploy the U.S. missile defense system. A survey by the Korea International Trade Association showed Sunday more than half of some 600 businesses in the tourism, retail and cultural sectors have been hurt by the measures. And some 200 said that while their numbers haven't been affected yet, they are bracing themselves for impact within the next three months. Yunshin, Business Daily. And the city of Seoul will soon display tourist signs in a number of Southeast Asian languages to welcome a growing number of visitors from the region. Starting next month, popular tourist spots in the capital, including the expat enclave of Itaewon and the shopping district of Myeongdong, will have tourist signs in six new languages, including Thai, Vietnamese and Malaysian. The move comes as the number of travelers from China has been dropping. Beijing has taken a series of retaliatory measures against Seoul's decision to deploy the THAAD missile defense system on its soil by ordering travel agencies in China to stop selling package tours to Korea. And that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with more business news that matters to you. Until then, goodbye.